Hello folks! I'm Vincent Waller, I'm supervising producer on Spongebob Squarepants. And I'm going to do some drawings for you today. I used to work on a little show called Ren and Stimpy, which was very big in the 90s. So I'm going to do some Ren and Stimpy drawings for you today while you watch. Awesome. One of the first things I learned was to start with the expression. Like if you're going to do big, just do, it's like you start with the expression you want and then work the character into it. What expression are you going for with this one? Oh, elated. <laughs> Stimpy was elated a lot. He was a happy guy. He was. It was a happy time for him. And I actually learned that tip from Bob Camp, who was one of the mains on Ren and Stimpy. Bob Camp? Yeah. And he's actually done some storyboards for us here on SpongeBob, too. Nice. We got some fans saying hello. Hi, fans! <laughs> Pardon my rough drawings. It's been a little while since I've drawn these guys with any. Uh, Regularity. Still got it, man. Stimpy's always happy for company, so he's waving. Hi! <laughs> Was Ren and Stimpy the first Nickelodeon show? You worked on? Uh, it was the very first Nickelodeon show I worked on. It was also the first show I worked on where cartoonists were in charge, which was great fun. Because before that, we had not been. You were just handed a script and said, draw this. Didn't matter if it was funny enough or not. So it was a real treat when we finally got to decide what our stories were going to be, what they were going to say, and how they were going to say it and how they were going to move when they said it. Did you know that when you took the job? Uh, I did, because I knew the people who were doing it. Who were some of the folks that you were working with? Back uh, John Chris Felusi, Jim Smith, Lynn Naylor, Chris Riccardi, uh, Mike Fontanelli, um, all amazing cartoonists, and actually most of them put me to shame, but that's okay because I learned a heck of a lot from all of them. Some legends right there. Yeah. What's Ren doing? Uh, he's pouting. I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come up with a gag for this one before I started it. It works. They were usually juxtapositioned with each other. And Stimpy was incredibly happy most of the time, and Ren a little less so. Cool. Nice. The Ren could be happy too. There were times. What are the things that made Ren happy? Oh, human women. <laughs> <laughs> he was oddly attracted to them. Hey Vince, can the fans at home ask you any questions? Sure! That would make this uh, easier for me, actually. Nice. Makes me think less about what I'm doing and more about what they're asking. <laughs> what would y'all like to know? We'll wait for some fans to ask some questions. We've got some requests coming in for drawings, right. too. <laughs> After this, you're going to draw Mr. Horse. Oh, okay. He's been a while, too, but I'll do it! Nice. Because even though he doesn't like it. Hmm. No, sir, I don't like it. <laughs> That's exactly what they want you to say <laughs> when you try him. Yep. That's fun. And of course, 
Stimpy is always just interested in Ren. <laughs> Best pal. He loved Ren, but that kind of talk makes Ren uncomfortable. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. You think we draw Mr. Horse? Mr. Horse. I'll give her a shot. No, I don't like I'll, it. I'll give her a shot. It's been a while. A fan at home wants to know what your favorite fried chicken is. You mean my favorite place to buy it? <laughs> <laughs> What's the best fried chicken you've ever eaten? Oh. Best fried chicken. Actually, I don't want to make the place just filled up with people, but uh, lately my favorite has actually been a place called Obi Bear down in Koreatown in Los Angeles. Um, I've seen just place. some of the, it's, it's really just a bar and they have pub food, but their fried chicken is amazing. <laughs> you a big fan of fried chicken? I'm a, you know, I'm from Texas, so I'm a big fan of fried chicken. Nice. You grew up in Texas? I did. Nice. Did you go to school there and everything too? Um, not, I mean, I did go to school some there, but I pretty much creeped into animation through the back window. Oh. So. How so? Um, well, I never really had any formal training other than, um, I started doing caricatures at Six Flags Over Texas when I was 15. And that's actually where I met Bob Camp, who then, you know, ended up working on many of the same shows together. Wow. You got your start doing caricatures at I, Six Flags? I did. Amazing. It was not that different than what I'm doing right this moment because drawing things to make people happy <laughs> very quickly with a marker. It's a hard skill to master. So then how did you get into the animation industry then? Um, let me think. Uh, through... Uh, us doing caricatures, Bob Camp met a guy who was doing comics and went, hey, you draw really well, you should maybe do comics. And he started doing comics and I went up to visit and met his editor, Larry Hama, who was working, uh, doing Savage Sword of Conan and Conan and The Nom and a whole bunch of these books at, at Marvel. And after I met him, I felt empowered enough to start sending him samples of my work. And I, I, for a year, just send drawings, and he would send them back with stuff circled, going, this is terrible, do something like this, the perspective here needs help, this expression doesn't mean anything, all this stuff. Really patiently sending notes and sending them back. And then one day, he said, oh, I'll take this one. And it was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, very soon quit my job as a dishwasher at the Huntington Sheridan and, uh, and um, hitchhiked to New York City. <laughs> and started doing uh, work on a regular basis at Marvel oh, cool. uh, for uh, this book, Savage Tales, and uh, Savage Sword of Conan, and basically all the manly books where someone died on every other page. <laughs> um, and we did that for, I was in New York doing that for about eight years, um, and, then, uh, and then Bob Camp again <laughs> got a job at Rankin Bass um, on a show called The Tiger Sharks, and um, he realized how much more animation paid than, than comics paid right. and uh, got offered a job out here in California to, on, on, on a show at Deke. And so we, he said, you want to go with? And I was like, heck yes. We got in the car, all our belongings and a dog and drove out here. Uh, it took me about a year. I, I worked construction for a year until I got hired on um, at... Uh, at Deke on the real Ghostbusters by the producer who recognized my name from comics because he always wanted to work in comics. Wow. Um, and, um, and the rest is history. I was there for about three or four years and then uh, John Kay came in to, to DIC to do Beanie and Cecil and Bob Camp went, worked with him and long story short, they ended up leaving Beanie and Cecil but then started pitching shows around and they pitched Ren and Stimpy and Vanessa Coffey went, these guys, I like these guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they did the pilot, and the pilot got a pickup for the series, and then I got a, a call from John Kay, going, Hey, you want to work on cartoons? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Yes, please! <laughs> and then the next week went over and um, spent the first week writing. Uh, I, I co-wrote one of the very first episodes of Stimpy's Big Day and Big Shot Stimpy. Cool. And, um,
continuum? Uh, if you wrote it, you pretty much had to board it. So uh, I boarded that first Big Shot Stimpy and, uh, and Stimpy's Big Day, along with Lynn Naylor. She came in and did some scenes too. But, uh, but I had the bulk of that one. That's awesome. It's a great story. So it seems like making friends in the industry is really important. It is very important. The, the biggest thing I tell anybody that's getting into the industry is don't be a jerk because it doesn't matter how well you draw. People will get tired of that, mm -hmm. and they will stop calling you. That's a big tip. But almost everybody in the industry are amazing and wonderful and happy-go-lucky. <laughs> Seems like it. <laughs> because why not? On the worst day, we're drawing cartoons. Yeah. You got a request for Powder Toast Man after this is Ah. Well, you knew that was coming. I should have known that was coming. <laughs> First, I'll do his butt. <laughs> what uh, inspires you to draw? Uh, I am driven to draw. It's 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 like knitting for me. It's, it helps me think. It helps me relax. Um, I draw pretty much all day, every day, so, on some level. It actually it helps me. It helps me. Uh, listen in meetings. It's like I might seem a little distracted because that guy's doodling throughout the meeting, but um, it is actually helping me listen. That's awesome. That was one of Powder Toast Man's powers. <laughs> Farting. Right. Amazing. Cool. So you also work on SpongeBob, don't you, Vince? I do work on SpongeBob every day. <laughs> every day. I love it. Nice. He's been very good to me. What's it like working on Spongebob these days? You got some um, old pals from Ren and Snippy working with you? Uh, well, Bob Camp did come in and do a few boards for us. Um, but uh, let me think. Uh, actually, Fred Osmond did, he did work on Ren and Snippy, the uh, second incarnation, the adult cartoon party. Hmm. The more adult version of that. Yes. And uh, he is now doing storyboards for us and doing amazing work, even though... Currently, he is off in... Oop, I forgot to leave room for his chin. You can tell it's been a while since I've done this. <laughs> All good. The fans will understand. Yeah. He's changing from his incognito. Hmm. Did you work on any other Nickelodeon shows between Ren and Stimpy and... SpongeBob. Uh, let me think. I worked for did Oh Yeah Cartoons. Uh, did a, a few shorts for them. I, I did one called Pete Patrick Private Eye that was that was all. all right, gotcha. And uh, I did a whole bunch of uh, what was it called? Jelly's Day. Jelly's something. You guys saw it, you remember, but anyway, a bunch of that stuff. And I did a whole lot of helping out with other people's um, shows. I also did one called Hey Look that I was very proud of, which was an homage to, to Harvey Kurtzman, hmm. one of the greatest cartoonists in all the world. Powder Toast Man. <laughs> nice. Good stuff. Any other requests out there? Uh, maybe you can draw some SpongeBob's. I can do that. How about that? Maybe some SpongeBob sure. and Patrick action. Yeah. SpongeBob is almost always starting off with a rectangle. formula to Spongebob at this point? Uh, not really. I mean, some people might have some formulas. I'm, I'm not very formulaic. I'm pretty much just draw by the seat of my pants and what is necessary for whatever story I'm telling. Hmm. Um, but other than, you know, the rectangle. Always a rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. It's kind of in the name almost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Would you say SpongeBob's a lot like uh, 
about Stimpy? Uh, he has the same kind of outlook, except he's smarter. <laughs> Um, except, of course, when Stimpy is being incredibly bright, but mostly Stimpy's pretty dumb. Uh, SpongeBob just has a really, you know, happy-go-lucky outlook, which he shares with Stimpy. And like any buddy show, there are some correlations. It's like, you know, SpongeBob is also very emotionally volatile, not unlike Ren was, and, you know, his best pal, Stimpy and so you know big dumb guys next to them. <laughs> it uh, helps with comedy if there's some misunderstandings. And how long have you been working on SpongeBob? No. This time? Oh, this time I think it's 13 years. Wow. I uh, I worked on the pilot. I mean, not the pilot. I worked on the first season, and then I went away and did a bunch of other stuff, including the rehash of uh, Ren and Stimpy for Adult Cartoon Party. And um, then came back in season four after they'd finished the first movie and uh, started, as, started doing boards and then quickly went into becoming creative director with Paul Tibbet as supervising producer. Cool. So you've been with the crew for a long time. Oh, yeah. Do you have an absolute favorite SpongeBob episode? Uh, they all I think your I, well, I'm really excited about the stuff we're doing this season because we're getting it back to cartoony roots where everything you'll really see the difference coming up in October. There will be some first of season ten shows on, and I highly recommend you watch those because you will see a difference in uh, just. You know, like any show, after it's been on for a while, people kind of start getting into a groove and it just becomes a little less. So we came in and we went, time to shake it up! It's time to go big! <laughs> let's move these characters around. Instead of, you know, walking across the room, let's bounce them across the room. You know, just little things that add to comedy. So That's awesome. I'm sure the fans are going to be really excited about that. I hope so. And we are blessed with a really amazing crew that I'm sure you met some of them. You met Adam already. And yeah. I think he was in one of your things last week. We, we did a Facebook Live with yeah. Adam a few weeks ago, that's right. Spongebob and Patrick. <laughs> hey, fans. Hi, fans. That's great. Hi, the trick with, the trick with, oh, I didn't get myself enough room, but the trick with the pineapple is really getting those lines to wrap around the pineapple to give it the dimension. And it doesn't actually even have to be that perfect for everybody to go, oh, that's the pineapple. Hmm. Pretty universally recognizable yeah. at this point. Actually, yeah, SpongeBob is pretty universally recognizable wherever you are. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I was even, oops, sorry, didn't mean to move that on you. Oh, no worries. <laughs> That's great. I was even in Shang drawings. Shanghai. This is great. Even in Shanghai, you had uh, even in Shanghai, Shanghai, I was walking through, you wouldn't have thought that they had electricity where I was. Wow. Uh, I mean, there was literally like a little old lady cutting firewood in front of an apartment that didn't have a door on it, and it was just dark inside. And this little kid walked up to me, and I carry a post-it pad with Ren and Snippies when I travel for, you know, to augment tips and stuff. And I pulled off SpongeBob, and I handed it to this kid who's literally probably two and a half, thinking he's not going to know who this is. And he just looked at it, and he was, ah! he was <laughs> run off screaming at the top of his lungs in Chinese. And I'm like, okay, I'm either in a lot of trouble or that's a good thing. <laughs> And within 40 seconds, 10 kids came pouring out of where he ran into, and I stood there drawing Spongebobs and Patricks, wow. just handing them out in the middle of Shanghai, China. You're a good person, Vince. That's uh, awesome. No, that that's awesome. awesome. Uh, cool. One of the tricks for drawing Spongebob, it's like when he's happy, that's his happy, but you can do all kinds of stuff with him. Like when he's sad, a lot has to do with just, you can just droop his nose, and then suddenly... 
Oh, he's... Hmm. He's a nice guy here, too. Yes. Usually, yeah, we call it uh, getting glassy. Hmm. You know, get all reflective and big. Well, that's not my favorite. <laughs> Let me try that again. <laughs> Down to the floor with <laughs> oh, no. despicable drawing that didn't do as I wanted. <laughs> Reset. Yeah. No worries, it's just live video. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not worried. Good. I know everybody out there is my friend. Yeah, lots of people. You got people from London saying hello. Oh, cheers. The world. Sad Bob. Sad Bob. He's never sad for very long, though. No, he's not. Right? He's probably found out that this is his day off or something, right? Yes. Krusty Krab is closed! Even for the day, that can be sad. Hmm. So much emotion. He is nothing if not emotional. <laughs> you can even start a little light, but let's see. You can even droop his hat when he's extra sad. That's awesome, Vince. So it looks like we're uh, we're running out of time. Oh no! Oh, yeah, oh no! It's over. Even though I'm sweating, it feels like it's just been five minutes. <laughs> yes. oh, look at all these awesome drawings you were able to draw for us. Well, thank you so much, Vince, for taking the time to to hang out with the fans. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Any old time. See ya.